Guys, I'm going to show you um, the solution for procrastination that came to me after many, many years of struggling, self-sabotage, huge frustration, huge degrees of guilt and shame. And really this approach, you could put it this way, it's about retraining your nervous system. It's about retraining it to be more cooperative with you know doing the things that we want to do for a long time mine was i was caught up in a lot of conflict inner conflict about doing things not doing things shame about not doing things and you know wanting to push myself harder now spoiler alert here to begin with it's not about pushing yourself harder in fact it's actually the opposite of that because the nervous system doesn't respond well to threat it just makes it dig in even more and stay in its defensive position but what I'm going to do here, I'm going to read a question, and this question is from uh, Daniel. And I wanted to share this question because it's really going to help a lot of people, I think, because so many of us have this. This was the problem I had in the past, and uh, so many people I work with have this issue. So I'm going to show you Daniel's question, and then I'm going to show you a technique for procrastination. And it's a very, very practical technique. It's counterintuitive. But uh, if you try it for a little while, you'll find that it's, uh, it's going to be helpful. So let's take a look here at Daniel's question to begin. And Daniel says, I know, David, that you've said in the past that the little have to voice, which is that voice that bullies us and pushes us all the time, this have to voice is the thing that causes procrastination, which is true. I have said that in the past. And I'm going to get to that a little bit more here in a moment. You also say we should drop it or question it, but I can't convince myself of this. So this Daniel is finding it difficult to challenge or question this little voice, this belief system that relies on have to. I just believe there are things I have to do. How can I even go about questioning this belief when it seems so strong? And this is why I wanted to share this question with you, and Daniel has asked me to do this video here. And I'm going to show a technique. There's no willpower involved. In fact, all you need is a little bit of boundary control to step away from something rather than to do something. Okay. And if you can, if you can grasp this concept, I've made other videos in this, but I'll, I'll keep kind of explaining it maybe in different ways. But if you can grasp this concept, the emotional freedom and really above all, the resolution to inner conflict goes away. And that's really what we're after here. So let's just workshop this here together for a little while, okay? And see if we can come up with a really understanding of why this, this paralysis kicks in, why this pro procrastination shows up here. So if we take a look at this, right? Essentially, procrastination comes down to this. It's a conflict within ourselves, okay? So what we have in this conflict is we have two, a kind of a mind that is at war with itself, okay? And we're right in the middle and we've been torn apart between the two of them. What we wanna do with the solution, and this is very abstract, this is not the technique, I'm just giving you a little overview here. What we wanna do is get into a unified mind that is not split, that is not um, at war with itself. It's unified resolution to it, okay, there's peace. Now, on one hand, when we have procrastination, we have one little voice that says, I don't want to do it, or even I can't do it. It might even say things like, look, it's hopeless. It'll be no good now anyway. Or it's an undermining kind of voice. And of course, when we're in that little mentality, we're going to have a lot of shame and we're going to also feel stuck and stagnation. Okay, but main thing is shame or guilt. We're going to feel in that. Now, if we were to just accept that, that'd be that it wouldn't be a good situation to be in at all. And in fact, many of us do find ourselves stuck in that situation. But procrastination is slightly different because the other side of the equation is this. You have to do it. Okay, and this is our, our bully. You could call it the, um, the inner critic. And not only does it say you have to do it, but it's going to make threats against you sometimes and it'll, it'll hold these terrible consequences over you if you don't do it, right? And sometimes those come in the form of visual images that you might see in your future, for instance, right? Now, so if on one hand, I say, look, I don't want to do it. 
And then we're saying, you have to do it. You can see that there is a, this is what we mean by a mind at war with itself. Two different parts, two different motives pulling each other apart. And you're stuck right in the middle and that looks like paralysis or stagnation. You just can't move. Okay. Feeling guilty usually. And what we're looking for here is when we do resolve this issue, decisiveness is what we're going to experience much, much more often. Or even a better way to put it is a lack of indecision. We won't be pulled apart like this anymore. This is what it looks like when we heal procrastination. We'll be a lot more peaceful because the mind is in a war with itself and we'll be in what they call you know, that state of flow where you're just gradually, quite happily getting things done. So we're talking about ending indecision, becoming more decisive, ending that battle within. Now, you know, if you listen to that voice that says you don't have to do it, or I don't want to do it, you know what, that's fine. Also, if you listen to that voice that said you have to do it, that would be fine. You go and do it. The problem is there's this competition, there's this conflict. So. We're in agreement, I hope, at this point, that the problem itself is not necessarily either voice. It's not even have to, which I, I, I mentioned, and uh, Daniel mentioned that I was talking about getting rid of it. It's more that there's a conflict with it, okay? So we're trying to end this conflict within. Now, this technique, just dive into the technique here, is going to be, it's, I, I'm going to call this technique the agree and amplify technique. Now, the reason I developed this technique technique was for people in Daniel's situation who, you know, there's one way you can get rid of that have to voice, which is to inquire into it. You can challenge it and you can realize because the truth is you don't have to do anything. There's always a choice and you deserve choice for every, right? You, you deserve praise for every positive choice that you make. But when we're so ingrained in this have to, and this have to is so strong, this, this, this technique is a stepping stone that will get you on, on the way. Okay. Now, what it involves like is, is this. Let me show you typical experience with someone who is procrastinating and they have these two competing voices in their mind, right? Two different uh, drives or motives. And you know, this was my experience for many, many years. So you're sitting there and you know, maybe it's 6 p.m. in the evening and you're thinking about, okay, well, look, I have a lot of things to do what am I going to do with my time? So you set an attention for maybe 6.30. I have to start soon. I have to start at 6.30 because this have to voice is so strong, right? And there's all that anxiety there. Now, what happens? 6.30 eventually rolls around and I find myself still sitting there Maybe I'm watching TV or playing video games or something. I'm not taking action. Now, believe it or not, at this point, there's no problem. Although you may be looking at that thinking that's not good. I'll explain why it's not a problem so far. It's the next thing we do in this sequence here. That's the problem. So far, there has been no problem, believe it or not. And you'll understand why in a few minutes. It's the next thing we're about to do here in this scenario. That is the problem. What we do is we fail to show up at 6.30. I have to do it, I have to do it. Fail to do it. And then I look forward to the rest of my evening. I'll say, well, look, 8 p.m. What do I tell myself? I have to do it. I'm telling myself the exact same thing again. What happens at eight o'clock? I don't do it. Now this is procrastination at this point, right? Telling myself I have to, I have to, I have to, and actually not having to, not doing it, right? So this is the scenario. That's the behavior we want to eliminate. Okay. Now I'm not going to tell you, you need to push yourself. You're not, you're lazy. You're any of those things because none of that stuff works. Believe me. What we need to do is to agree. The problem that, that the reason this has been happening here, constantly putting it off, constantly putting it off is that I, I'm telling myself I have to, but I don't fully agree with it. I haven't made a decision to, okay, I have to. It's almost like we're agreeing with the inner critic and we're gonna call it out. In fact, we're gonna out critic the inner critic here with this technique. Now, so this is what the technique looks like, the next step here. 
Same scenario, you're sitting there at 6 p.m., you're looking out into your evening, time ahead, you're going to set an attention for 6.30. And this time, now we're going to agree with the inner critic that's telling us I have to do it, I have to do it. And now we're going to say to ourselves, okay, I actually have to do it. Now you might be thinking to yourself, oh, well, big deal, right? That's not so great so far. What's all this big technique about? Okay, so I actually have to do it is what I'm telling myself. Now, 6.30 comes and I don't do it. Again, at this point, if you remember back, I said nothing has gone wrong at this point. It's what we do from this point forward in our evening that makes all the difference in this technique. So 6.30, I haven't taken action. Now, we look ahead. What's my next step? Am I going to continually push out start times and, and disrespect the boundary I have with work? This is the technique. The inner dialogue becomes much more like, rather than I have to do it, I have to do it and maintain that that false have to, which I don't really believe. We're going to really agree with it here. I'm going to say, I had to, and I didn't do it. Okay, then, I guess it won't be done today at all. In other words, what you're saying to yourself is, okay, this have to voice was threatening me and it was showing me all these consequences. Okay, I believe in have to. I fully believe in have to. Let me have the consequence. Show me the consequence. That's it, I didn't do it. Therefore, it's not done. Where's the, where's the consequence? Give me the consequence right now. What we're doing is, we're, we're, we're basically saying have to wins. Okay, you win. Now show me the consequence. But what you do not do is say, oh, I have to do it, I have to do it. Like if it's really something you have to do, it either gets done or it doesn't, right? It, 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 it will be something that happens. Now, what you're seeing here is, well, it didn't happen. I didn't do it. Therefore, okay, let me have the consequence. Now, the big fear for procrastinators, anyone who's having procrastination, is that they won't get the work done. That becomes the consequence that we, that we bring in here, okay? What I'm saying here is if you keep doing this approach, right, and train your nervous system, train that inner, inner critic voice, right, to say, well, okay, I agree. Let's go ahead. I have to do it at this time. And if I don't do it at this time, well, that means clearly it's not going to get done now because you were telling me I have to do it at that point. You step away from it. You no longer make promises to yourself. You no longer allow yourself to do it for the rest of that day. We're, we're out cr inner criticking the inner critic. We're out have toing the have to voice we're basically agreeing and amplifying it. Now, all the threats that it puts over you, right? All those horrible scenarios that are going to, you're going to fail, you're not going to be good enough. Okay, let me experience it right now. And what you'll see is all those threats are bravado, there's nothing behind them. You can relax. And you, go, you can literally relax. You go and relax. You step away from that project. And the next day you go back and you say to yourself, okay, well, look, I have to set a time if you show up yeah I, I did show up because I had to if you don't show up you say okay I didn't do it um, let me see the consequence for this and the consequence should be that you step away from it right you're training yourself to take yourself seriously and it only takes a couple of days in my experience right three days into this te this technique you may not have done anything on this project if you're in a chronic state of procrastination, much like I was and many of the people I've spoken with. But after maybe two or three days, your the inner critic realizes, actually, I'm not in control here at all. There's a decision maker here that is calling the shots and it, they need to be respected, not bullied or intimidated, right? That's you, your personality. Your personality is perfectly capable of doing this without any of this bullying or threatening stuff going on. So call it out. Call out that have to voice, Daniel, right? Or anyone else who's watching this. Eventually, what this technique will show you is that actually I don't have to do anything. I only ever do things because I make choices to do them. There's always a choice. Now, I can either choose, choose to do it or not do it. I'll, I'll live with the consequences of not doing it. I'll be happy to have them. But I'll also live with the, I also have to take responsibility for when things go well for myself. I deserve the credit for that, not some 
weird rule about having to do things when it's not even true. Okay, so I know it's a strange technique, but I can promise you one thing. If you can do that for a few days, do it as an experiment, you will find that this issue goes away. Okay, now there are other things, and I, I, you know, I talk about those other things in my book. You can check out the book, it's on my website. The link for it is, is below. Some other main things to keep in mind here with this, and I'm really trying to get these ideas out there because I, I have seen now with clients that they respond to it well. And it is just getting rid of that guilt and getting rid of that shame and indecision and that psychological energy that has been wasted in all this. People who are using this, this technique and the other techniques in the book are beginning to enjoy themselves more in their free time, which is allotted, consciously planned fun time, relaxation time. And they're getting a lot more done and it's just peaceful and easy. There's no real willpower or discipline or being strict with yourself with it. It's just natural, okay? And your, your confidence starts to build. I personally, I don't care that much about your personal productivity. I couldn't care less if you make, you know, a million dollars or euros or, or not, right? What I care about is developing your self-esteem. And that's what this technique will show you how to do. Guys, thanks again for watching today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.